Come join me on my second channel, Jaguar Gator 8, where we'll talk all things college football. New video drops every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern. Click the card in the upper right corner to watch the latest video. And now, on with our feature presentation. The Heidi game might be the most important game in the history of American sports from the perspective of how we view sporting events on television. It's a game that still lives on more than half a century later, and the game set the groundwork for the basic premise of not cutting off games before they end. I've made plenty of videos about the history of the Heidi game in one way or another, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. However, in short, when the New York Jets played the Oakland Raiders, the game ran long and went past three hours. NBC decided on the East Coast to cut off the ending to the game to show the television movie Heidi. At the time NBC cut the game off, the Jets led 32-29. By the time the game ended, the Raiders shocked everyone by coming back and winning 43-32, leaving fans understandably furious and confused as to why they couldn't watch the end of the game. But everything in life happens for a reason. Very few things in the broadcasting world are completely unprompted and not preceded by some sort of precedent. And while everyone knows the story of the Heidi game, there might be something from earlier in that 1968 AFL season that nobody talks about that may have significantly influenced NBC's decision on that November day to switch to Heidi. Because earlier in the season, after a program ran long, NBC had to make the choice between football and something else. And they chose football, much to the outrage of a lot of people, including arguably the network's biggest star. This is the story behind the 1968 AFL game between the Houston Oilers and Kansas City Chiefs, otherwise known as the pre heidi game, or the forgotten game that changed sports television history forever. Before I talk about the actual broadcasting incident in question, we need some context to understand the importance of this game, and how the game in question went. It's September 9th, 1968, and it's the opening week of the AFL season. After this one, we have an exciting game on our hands between the Houston Oilers and the Kansas City Chiefs. Of the three games on the schedule for the opening week of the season, this one was by far the most anticipated. In one corner, you have the Kansas City Chiefs, one of the best teams in the AFL on a year-to-year -year basis under head coach Hank Stram. They're two years removed from winning the AFL and representing the league in the Super Bowl, and they're coming off of a season where they went 9-5, finishing with the second-best point differential in the league and the third-best record in the league. And in the other corner, you have the Houston Oilers, the team that had the second best record in the league and won the AFL East with a 9-4-1 record. You can learn more about the 1967 Oilers and how they won the division in somewhat controversial fashion by clicking the card in the upper right corner. Not only did you have two of the three best teams in the AFL from the previous season squaring off against each other, but you knew it was going to be a good game. The Oilers and Chiefs played each other twice in 1967. Want to know what the point differential was across those two games? Zero. In Game 1, the Chiefs won by 5, defeating the Oilers 25-20. And in Game 2, the Oilers won by 5, defeating the Chiefs 24-19. The schedule makers picked an incredible game on paper to open up the season. And how big was this game? Well, this was going to be a nationally televised game on Monday night. This was Monday Night Football before Monday Night Football became a thing, as this was a one-off game that was the only Monday night game of the entire season. This was actually a historic game, because this was the first time in the nine-year history of the league that they were ever playing a game on a Monday night. The league only played weekend games, with the occasional Friday game sprinkled in, and the obvious exception of playing games on Thanksgiving. But they had never played a Monday night game before until tonight. This meant that this game would not be regionally televised. It was going to be nationally televised for the whole country to watch. The NFL season had not started yet, so this was the only show in town. If you were a football fan on this day, you were watching this game and sitting in front of your television set to watch two of the best teams in the AFL square off under the lights of the eighth wonder of the world at the Houston Astrodome. Sure enough, we got a fantastic game that, oddly enough, was once again decided by five points. Find someone who loves you as much as the Chiefs and Oilers love playing games against each other decided by five points. The Chiefs actually got off to a hot start in this one, and after falling behind 7-0, scored 26 consecutive points to lead it 26-7 in the fourth quarter. However, two touchdown passes by Pete Beathard to Mack Hake, the team's second-round pick playing his first game, made the score 26-21. Now you have to wonder why the Oilers didn't go for two to potentially make it 26-15 and then 
since the two-point conversion existed in the AFL. Bit of a questionable decision on the part of head coach Wally Lem, but regardless, the Chiefs won a 26-21, fending off a late charge by the Oilers and quarterback Pete Bether, who finished the game with 413 yards passing. And NBC was thrilled that this game was close, because they had the perfect lineup for that Monday night, where they were practically guaranteed to win in the ratings. Remember that the TV season hadn't started by this point, so you didn't have to worry about CBS or ABC shows taking away from the ratings. Not that any network was concerned with what ABC was doing back in 1968. CBS was airing reruns, and ABC was airing a tourism guide to San Francisco. NBC was the only one airing any live programming or programming of interest. At 9 o'clock Eastern, the Chiefs Oilers game would take place. It would be followed up immediately after at 11.30 Eastern with an all-new episode of The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. Seems like a pretty great night for television on NBC. Johnny Carson was one of the biggest names in entertainment at this point, as The Tonight Show was a certified winner. It was estimated that in the 1960s, over 40% of all the people watching late-night television were watching NBC. If you were watching late-night television, you weren't watching any other network, and you weren't watching ABC, as Joey Bishop's show was getting half the ratings that Carson was. You were watching NBC and watching Carson bring laughs to the audience and bring on some of the biggest names in entertainment. In the last month alone prior to this September day, Carson had brought on the Bee Gees and the Beach Boys as musical acts, just to highlight how big this show was. However, while everything seemed to be going great for NBC and Carson, as Carson was near the top of the television and the late night world, Carson was internally angry with NBC over the network's treatment of the show. In Carson's eyes, NBC was not treating the show and its time slot seriously, especially when the movie schedule for NBC during the 1968-69 television season was released, and Carson expressed concern that a lot of the movies would run into the start time of The Tonight Show. Carson's show was pulling big numbers and big money for NBC, and Carson felt that NBC wasn't taking him seriously or respecting his contract, which stated that the show must start at 11.30. As Carson said just a few days before this Chiefs Oilers game in question, it is not fair to treat my show like a late-night filler. This show is about the biggest moneymaker that NBC has, grossing about $27 or $28 million a year. This is a tough show to do. If they start moving it around, they are jeopardizing my career and also a contractual obligation. Tensions between NBC and Carson were high, and let's just say that the Oilers-Chiefs game did not make things better, because Carson was about to stand his ground and cost NBC a ton of money in the process. During the game, it became apparent that there was no way it was going to finish in two and a half hours. The Chiefs and Oilers were going to play at least three hours, especially with how many passes Bethard was throwing, which stopped the clock. And since the game started at 9 o'clock, it was going to cut into the start time of The Tonight Show, forcing the show to start past 11.30 Eastern. For Carson, who was already fuming at NBC for not taking his time slot seriously, after scheduling movies that interfered with his starting time, and therefore interfered with his ratings, this was the last straw. Because that day, on September 9th, Carson met with NBC executives and pulled out his contract showing that it was a violation of his contract to not show The Tonight Show at 11.30 Eastern. And with Carson met with the NBC executives, he basically gave an ultimatum. It's me, or it's the American Football League. If you show this AFL game, there's no way it's ending by 11.30. So unless you cut off the ending to the game, I'm out. I'm not filming tonight's show. So what did the NBC executives do when they were met with this demand? They decided that they were going to air the Chiefs Oilers game in its entirety. They weren't going to cut off the game at 11.30. And they told Carson that his show was going to have to start once the game ended. And Carson, citing the violation of his contract by NBC doing this, said, Then I'm not filming. And just like that, because of the AFL, the Tonight Show for the night of September 9th, 1968 was cancelled. Remember that this was the first ever Monday Night game that the AFL ever played, and this was the first time that NBC was ever airing a Monday Night Football game, period, so they had never run into this problem before. You'd think they could have thought this one through and started the game at 8.30 Eastern and had the best of both worlds, especially since it's not like NBC would have had to preempt any major programming since the new TV season hadn't started yet, as it was still the summer. But nope. Because of this, The Tonight Show was cancelled, and NBC at the last minute was scrambling to find replacement programming. 
Some stations just decide to air one hour of the news after the game. Some stations decide to air a rerun of the Tonight Show. Some stations just decide to sign off for the day completely and play the national anthem before calling it quits. But NBC's biggest star had stood his ground and left NBC in a pickle when it came to the dealings of their biggest moneymaker. And this game had huge implications on the future of the American Football League on television. The NFL did not play another Monday Night Football game ever again by choice, as the only other game to ever take place on a Monday night was a contest on October 20th, 1969, between the New York Jets and the Houston Oilers. That game was not by design, as that game was originally scheduled for a Sunday, but got moved to a Monday once the New York Mets made the World Series, as the Mets and Jets shared the same stadium and they needed to avoid a conflict. However, that game was not nationally televised, so The Tonight Show aired as normal. NBC learned an important lesson on that day. Do not mess with your biggest moneymaker, and do not mess with Johnny Carson, because there will be outrage if you take The Tonight Show off the air. And now, we fast forward two months after that Chiefs Oilers game to where we began, and to the game that changed sports broadcasting on television forever, the Heidi game. Obviously, in hindsight, the decision to air Heidi, a taped event, over the ending to a live sporting event seems ridiculous. But like I said at the top of this video, everything in life, especially in broadcasting, happens for a reason. And even though I completely disagree with it, as just about everyone did, when you have the context of that Chiefs Oilers game from two months before, NBC's decision made at least some sense. NBC was worried about what would happen if they did not show Heidi on time. Would the advertisers pull the plug? Would they be forced to not air the movie at all? and be forced to scramble for programming at the last minute? It's not like there wasn't precedent for this, and you can bet your bottom dollar that NBC wanted to avoid a situation like what happened with Johnny Carson just two months before from ever happening again. The Heidi game was a truly monumental game, and without the Heidi game, sports broadcasting would never be the same. It was a case of NBC having to choose between entertainment for the mass population and football, and they chose entertainment. But maybe the reason for that isn't because of incompetence, or because of people and television executives who had no idea what they were doing. Maybe it was because earlier in the year, they had to choose between entertainment for the mass population and football, and they chose football, and it angered a ton of people, including their biggest star, in the process. Without Johnny Carson and the aftermath from that, who knows if the Heidi game even happens in the first place? Because while Jets Raiders gets all the recognition today, Chief Soilers deserves some recognition as that infamous game's forgotten predecessor. Because little did we know at the time that the night that America, at the last minute and completely out of nowhere, didn't get to hear the famous line, here's Johnny, was the night that sports television and broadcasting would change forever. Get your official Jaguar Gator 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com, and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL Trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at Jaguar9. To see college football videos, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.